Hi, my name is Greg Thompson. I'm a civil engineer and certified floodplain manager. I have 18 years of water resources experience, and I've been helping the Fargo-Moorhead area work towards permanent flood protection for the past 12 years. Today, I'm gonna to provide an overview of the FM area diversion project, and then I'll step through some of the details on the project operation. So there are six rivers that contribute to flooding in the Fargo-Moorhead area, all generally moving in a south to north direction. The first river, the largest of them all, of course, is the Red River, which creates the, the backbone of the project. This is the border between North Dakota and Minnesota. The next river is the Wild Rice River, which is a tributary to the Red, um, producing approximately a, a third of the flooding upstream of the project. The Cheyenne River uh, contributes water from the west, enters in uh, to the project area from the southwest near Horace. Uh, the Cheyenne River extends through West Fargo and then around Harwood and then discharges into the Red River north of town. The Maple River, Lower Rush River and Rush River all flow into the Cheyenne River north of West Fargo. This map shows a 1% chance flooding in the Fargo-Moorhead area. This is also referred to as the 100-year flood. The diversion project is designed to provide certifiable flood protection from all six flooding sources. Let's take a look at the project a little closer. There are three major project components, the diversion channel, the southern embankment, and the in-town levees. The diversion channel is being designed and constructed by a private developer through what's called a public-private partnership, or a P3. The diversion channel is gonna be 30 miles long, beginning at its inlet down by Horace, extending around the west side of West Fargo, and outletting into the Red River near the city of Georgetown, Minnesota. Although the exact configuration of the channel will be up to that P3 developer, we're expecting it to be somewhere around 20 feet deep and approximately 200 to 300 feet wide at its bottom. The diversion channel will have two aqueduct structures, one on the Maple River and one on the Cheyenne River. These aqueduct structures allow tributary river flows to pass into the protected area in a controlled manner. And then during a flood, any excess flows will pass through a spillway and into the diversion channel. I like to think of these aqueduct structures as like an interstate overpass, where the diversion channel is like the interstate, which is approximately the same dimensions, and then the aqueduct structure will be like that overpassing road with a bridge allowing that water to pass into the protected area. The second component is the southern embankment. The main purpose of the southern embankment is to regulate water flowing into the metro area and direct it into the diversion channel. Another purpose of the southern embankment is to store water within the upstream mitigation area to minimize uh, hydraulic impacts. The southern embankment is being designed by the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers and the length is gonna be approximately 20 miles long, extending from high ground south of Horace, extending around to the north and east, back down to the south, southeast of the city of Comstock. There will be three gated structures that control how much water goes into town, through the diversion, and in how much water is being stored. So of the three gates, the diversion inlet structure will have three gates that are roughly 50 feet wide by 26 foot tall. The Wild Rice River structure will have two gates that are square at 40 foot wide by 40 foot tall. And the Red River structure will have three gates that are 50 foot wide by 50 foot tall. So let's take a closer look at the Red River structure. Now we're looking at the Red River structure physical model. This model was used by the Corps of Engineers to see how efficiently the structure would pass water and if any parts of the design needed to be modified. They were able to improve how the water entered the structure by changing the approach slabs, and they also made some adjustments to better manage the flow as it leaves the structure. The scale of the model is 1 to 40, which means that one foot in the model equals 40 feet in the field. To put this into perspective, a Lego person would represent an average height person. During a 100-year flood, the gates will be open approximately 5 feet. And during a 500-year flood, the gates will be open approximately 7 feet. Let's go back and look at the other components of the project and get into the operation plan. So the third component of the project is the in-town levees. These projects include both levees and flood walls constructed by the City of Fargo, City of Moorhead, and also the Diversion Authority. These levees allow the project to be certifiable for a 100-year event while passing a river stage at 37 feet through town. Before I get into the operations plan, I'd like to step through four terms that'll help explain how the project operates. The first one is flow. Flow is simply the amount of water moving through a system or moving through a river. 
The flow is typically measured in cubic feet per second. So you think of a cubic foot is roughly one foot by one foot, similar to a basketball. So you think in 2009, there were roughly 30,000 basketballs moving through the river every second. The second term is stream flow gauge. And stream flow gauges are tools used to measure the flow. These are managed by the United States Geological Survey. And there are stream flow gauges on all the tributary rivers uh, surrounding the Fargo-Moorhead area. The three most common ones that we're gonna talk about today are the Fargo gauge, so the Red River gauge at Fargo, and then a Red River gauge at Enlo, and then the Wild Rice River gauge at Abercrombie. Both Enlo and Abercrombie are upstream of the project. The third term is a hydrograph, and this is a, a plot of flow over time. And this can also be a plot of elevation over time. So I'll step through several flood hydrographs um, relating to the operation plan. And then the last term is the protected area, also referred to as the in-town area. And this is the area east of the diversion channel, north of the southern embankment that'll receive that flood reduction. All right, so let's talk about the project operation. The overall goal of the project is to protect the Fargo-Moorhead metro area from extreme flooding. Now I say extreme flooding, and that's because the project will only operate when the flows coming into the project exceed 21,000 cubic feet per second, or CFS. So this is roughly equivalent to a 20-year event. So there's a 5% chance of the project operating in any given year. So during project operation, the gates will pass a specific design flow through town based on the size of the inflow. So for uh, floods up to 100 year, we'll allow uh, a flow up to a, what's equivalent to a river stage of 37 feet through town. For a flood such as a 500 year event, we'll allow flows up to a river stage of 40 feet through town. To kind of put that into perspective, the effective 100 year floodplain is right at 39.3 feet. And then the proposed floodplain with new hydrology would be somewhere around 41 feet. So with this project, the 100 year and 500 year will be uh, reducing the flood levels through town. Other parts of the project, as I mentioned, uh, water will be stored in the upstream mitigation area. And this will be to minimize downstream impacts. And then water will be conveyed into the diversion channel and passed around town. In the next few minutes, I'll step through a progression of flood hydrographs associated with the project. So during design, we created synthetic flood hydrographs to simulate historical events like 2006, 2009, or 2011. These design events include the 10 year, 20 year, 25, 50, 100 year, and 500 year. So the example hydrographs and flooding shown here are from a 100 year design event. Here you'll see the blue hydrograph is a combined Abertrimian and Enlo. Those are that flows upstream of the project. The red hydrograph is what's going through the southern embankment into town, which will transfer downstream into the Fargo gauge. The yellow hydrograph is the flows going into the diversion channel. And then the green dashed line shows the stage hydrograph within the upstream mitigation area. During non-flood times, the Red River structure and Wild Rice River structure will be open and the diversion inlet structure will remain closed. So as snowmelt runs off, all the stream flow gauges will be monitored and then flows at those upstream gauges, the Wild Rice River and Red River will be recorded. If the flow is less than 21,000 cubic feet per second, the project will not operate. Again, that's roughly that 20 year event. So when the flows exceed 21,000 CFS, the project will begin operation. So at this time, flows will be recorded at the Wild Rice River structure and the Red River structure, and these flows will remain constant through town. So you'll see this red line extend horizontally. At this time, the upstream mitigation area will begin to store water, but yet the diversion in the structure remains closed. Stream flow gauges will continue to be monitored, and then the flows through town will be increased to that design threshold I spoke of. So you'll see this red line increase, and then it'll level off and produce a river stage of 37 feet through town for a 100 year, or 40 feet through town for a 500 year. Any excess flows will then be passed into the diversion channel through the diversion inlet structure. So you'll see this yellow line start to extend up. Here, the maximum flow through the diversion inlet structure will be 20,000 CFS for a 100 year and 25,000 CFS for a 500 year. The upstream mitigation area will then crest and the pool will begin to recede and the gates will return to their original position in preparation for the next flood. 
So after studying flood solutions for the past 12 years, the Diversion Authority has developed a robust project to provide permanent flood protection for the Fargo-Moorhead metro area. I hope this summary gives you an overview of the project as well as uh, an idea on how the project will be operated.